Welcome to Multiple Offers, a real estate show with competing perspectives. Today, we are talking about what's going on in May 2020. Put that coffee down. Put that coffee down. If you're good Washing at something, coffee. never do it for free. Yeah. Oh, you know, for hiring? <laughs> Coffee's for it's only a two-week here. course. I Fair enough. So, so um, today we're going to be getting into everything that's going on with, uh, we just got the stats in from uh, last month, April 2020, which is the very first month that uh, was a completely COVID month as opposed to uh, March, which some of it, it was business as usual. So the stats were a little skewed. But before we get into all of that, uh, what's been going on, guys? You've been busy. Same old. It seems like more listings now. Yeah. It's been yeah, that's been a transition for us. Yeah, for sure. I think we'll we'll end up talking a little bit about uh, about that as we go, for sure. Yeah, we've been preparing listings the last few weeks. We've been talking on these different episodes, but to yesterday was the first time we actually launched one. The first one we had been preparing got delayed. So we only just released it yesterday. Nice thing is we're getting some calls on it. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk about that, maybe include that more in our discussion here today, but uh, fine, nice to have something going again. Yeah. How about you, yeah, Jeff? For sure. Um, well, <laughs> so I want to preface this with the fact that um, uh, I don't have any reason to believe that I, I have COVID, um, but I got a, a COVID test yesterday the the reason being is i've been fighting a cough and uh, i've been stuffed up and uh, as a lot of our listeners know my wife has a very compromised immune system uh so i called my doctor and they decided to get me in and, and go for a test and i've been uh, living in isolation in in like the master bedroom is basically where i've been for the last two days oh um, mm. but that sounds oh, hard <laughs> well I've, I've got you know what it is and it isn't because when I'm hungry, I just text. I'm like, bring me a sandwich. Ah. <laughs> and, and like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been okay. I, I mean, I'm FaceTiming with the kids, even though they're in the house, which is a little, a little weird, but I've got a nice balcony. I did a bunch of work sitting on the balcony yesterday. It's, uh, it's been all right. And I should have the results back. Like hopefully by the time we're done this podcast, um, I'll have the results back and I can just go back to normal. But do you guys know what's involved? In the COVID, it's a test. brain biopsy. Bob your brain from in your nose. Pretty sure. Oh my, yeah. Like, and my wife <laughs> lied to me. She's like, "Oh, it's just like a swab." Uh, so I, I go to this uh, um, a little parking lot in Vancouver, and there's there's uh, I'm the first one there. I got there early, and so I I drive in, and you wear a mask until they tell you to take it off. And this guy in full hazmat suit comes out, and he he's like, "Just so you know." this is going to be unpleasant. And then he like feeds this tube and like, it's just going down my nose. I'm like, Oh, maybe they're just taking some mucus from my nose. Like, no, that's that. He's still going. He's like, and then like at a certain point, I just start having a coughing fit as this thing's like threaded further and further uh, into my body. Um, and then, you know, he's got to do it again. He's got to like fish it back out and pull it. And it's like scraping along everything. It was um, unpleasant was a, a uh, wild uh, understatement. Um, it was not a fun experience in the slightest. You think, you'd think that there would be a better way to, to, to do it. <laughs> it just seems like <laughs> I've got, you know, I knew in my mouth. There's all sorts of places, but the, the, the full nose brain swab. Well, I was totally ignorant. I kind of was expecting them to just like stick a piece of like a Q-tip in my mouth or something. Like I was, I was, I was not prepared. Um. <laughs> Jeez. Well, hopefully you get your negative back soon and things get a little more back to normal. Yeah. I mean, I'm, all, I'm already feeling better. Um, I mean, the, the, if I did have it, it's, it's not going to be bad, but the problem is you can, uh, you can be an asymptomatic carrier right which i don't think is the case knock on wood i i think uh everything will be fine and i'll be back to 
showing places this afternoon. <laughs> so yeah. we'll, uh, <laughs> it's, we'll it's see how that goes. It's important too for just in, in good conscience because you know we're all we all got our COVID forms now for before we're yeah. doing showings and things. Um, just to make sure you know if you left the country, all the typical questions. Um, and it would be hard for you to 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 go ahead with that having even though it's like common cold or allergy 100 and you're like i can't in good conscience be showing these properties potentially because of my symptoms so yeah yeah totally cool so, so a day or so yeah so anyway on the on that note um we got the stats in did you do you guys get a chance to look over uh what's been going on in in the market yeah i looked at them Thoughts? i took a i took a high level look very very broad so uh, I have my I have my general senses and opinions on the market. If you want to dig into stats specifically, you're uh, welcome to take the floor. Yeah, well, um, I mean, a few things stand out. Uh, I think I don't remember. I think it was Jer a few episodes ago talked about how while the numbers were really going to be down, that the sales ratios were what was important and. Jer, that was you, right? Who was yeah? Who that's kind of that's, that's been my my thought, and is is still for the most part my thought. Yeah, and for the most part, in in New West, I mean, the sales ratios got beat up, but definitely not as beat up as as I think they could have been. They they're you know houses are sitting around thirteen or fourteen percent, and and condos are around fifteen percent. Which um, for those of you who aren't realtors and consume this stuff all the time. That's where a balanced market lives. That that's sort of now it never stays balanced for very long. It's when it drops under ten percent that we start seeing real drastic changes in in pricing. So I mean, even though it's not good, we were sort of between twenty and twenty five percent before uh, all of this started. Um, I don't know. I was preparing for it to be worse than it was. Yeah, and if you if you look at hit historic like listing when we're when we we take this from the lens of supply and demand, and you look at um, historic uh, listing amounts, we're still really on the low side. Um, yeah. And so that's what, when, when I'm mentioning, you know, the, the ratios between those is, is especially when you've got something like this going on, it can be, we know how kind of fickle and hot and cold our market is here, where as soon as there's a news report, you can start to see that translate into, um, you know, different buyer activities, different seller activities. And we haven't been seeing just the flood, like there's been a couple scary news stories, like we're, we're in for it. This is just the beginning of it. Enough sort of shock and awe to get people to start reacting. And I feel like we haven't quite had that, you know, the listings that appointments that Matt and I have done, um, I should not even listing appointments because these are people that they had already had the wheels in motion to list their place beforehand. So these, none of the, even though all oh, our listing inventory is picking up right now, personally for our team, it's, it's all kind of within reason and, and none of them are, I need to offload. Like the sentiment isn't, I need to offload this property because stuff is about to hit the fan and get crazy. Did, did either of you guys see that? Uh, I think it was CTV news report a couple days ago that, that uh, they were interviewing Keith Roy. Nope. Missed it. Oh man. It was funny. So they, they interviewed Keith Roy and this other realtor, local realtor. I don't know him. His name's Hutchie. And it was like, so clearly a tale of two different markets that are happening in the same market. Hutchie was talking about how there's so much uncertainty, nothing's moving. Everybody has to drop their prices by like 8%. Like it's, it was this real doom and gloom. And meanwhile, Keith's like, yeah, you know, we had a listing, it was priced where the market was, but as soon as we did a price reduction, we had four, we had a multiple offer four ways on it. And you know, we didn't even have any showings. We did them all virtually with a 360 tour. Like you couldn't oh, wow. have had two more opposite people discussing the market, which I think is important. Like even two people who really know the market might be experiencing very different things right now. Yeah, I'd say my general observation that, that I think people need to be aware of when I, when I say what's going on is when you talk about numbers, sales volume is way down and that sounds scary. Uh, listing numbers is down and that can appear scary. But what matters to everybody is what their home is worth. And yeah. so far, that valuation hasn't really changed from a general statement. Now, that could depend on exactly which product you have and some nuances there. But as a general statement, it's not a whole lot different than it was two months ago. I, I do think, and I, I, I agree with that for the most part. Um, 
I do think it's it is a little lower. Like I've I've got a listing right now that has a very comparable sale from a couple months ago, and every single person who views it brings up that sale and wants to get it at least under, not necessarily way under, but they they are, you know, well I won't pay what those people paid two months ago. Like that's a every single person who comes through so says well, that at well, some point. So that sounds like a shifting attitude that that's how people are perceiving the future of values. And that will probably be reflected for the month of May, but the month of April, those stats and the, the price index from the board is right around where it was for the months before. In in the suburbs, the Vancouver proper dropped, but the suburbs seemed to hold uh, pretty, pretty decently. One, one thing too, that I think, you know, we don't want to completely just sort of uh, say everything's sunshine and puppy dogs. Uh, you know, we did have the lowest number of sales since 1982. Um, now, I imagine you guys weren't paying a whole lot of attention to real estate in 1982. Um, I do have a lot of uh, history with that year because uh, that's the year the market was so bad my parents got divorced. So it's... Uh, <laughs> like it's um, it is, it isn't all good news, but within the sort of bad news that we all knew was coming, I don't think it's, it's not hopeless. Homes still are selling. The pie has gotten smaller um, for sure, but there are still buyers out there. There are still people wanting to move and they're selling at a decent rate. And I think the biggest saving grace is that we didn't get flooded with listings that, uh, that like Jer said, inventory is low and that's, uh, I think that's keeping prices where they are for sure. If anything, for, for realtors uh, listening, I mean, this obviously it's fewer sales means that there's more, less going around for us. And we see mm-hmm. that fluctuation just in, in like last year's medallion, your top 10% for the real estate board, just seeing the fluctuation of those numbers and what it, what it takes and what's going around. And a lot of agents that are, that are all sort of buying for that, that, um, that business. So certainly it, it's going to affect us <laughs> in that regard. Um, and that just to touch on what you're mentioning about the buyer sentiment of, well, I'm not paying that. That's definitely going around um, where you've got, well, I've heard that things could be going down. So I don't, I don't feel like I should be paying uh, a few months ago prices, but yet they're still out there and they're still wanting to buy something. So it's kind of interesting. And, 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 and if the sellers stick to their guns, like someone eventually will just pay it. And it, you know, it kind of is what it is at that point. Yeah. It's, it's really tough to compare it to historical scenarios. Like when you talk about 1982, Jeff, right? Because yes. this isn't based on any market pressure that's brought us here. It is a very abrupt forced pause on activity. Yeah, and, 1982 was double digit interest prices. That's what was causing like that's a market. People couldn't problem. people couldn't couldn't buy. Yeah, th- yeah, those are economic factors, right? Where, you know, people maybe had desires but couldn't uh whereas today it's sort of a lot of people were just told to stay home for the month of April, right? Yeah. Uh so it could change a lot. I really don't know what's going to happen, but I, I just want to kind of leave the door open to say that well, it's, Why don't you know, Matt? <laughs> So, Jeff, as restrictions are eased in the month of May, it certainly seems to me that a lot more people could come out of the woodwork, start engaging, and just that volume alone could be a good thing just to sustain the market. So it's really hard to know. I've written this to a few people that I don't know what will happen with prices one way or the other. Volume should pick up from where it was in April just because people were told to stay home. So yeah. it, it it's kind of goes without saying that there should be more volume in May than there was in April. Uh, people are hopeful that the market's going to crash. I've had a few people talking like that. Um, and then for sellers who are wondering, well, when should I cash out if I really do think I need to sell? I was looking at trends historically when the market falls and then recovers. And it takes about a year for the fall to finish and then the recovery to kind of do its thing to know that things are good again. So if a seller is wondering, you're going to be waiting around for a while. Now, unless you're also going to buy because it doesn't matter if you take a haircut on your place, but you can pass that, that beating that you took onto what you buy. I mean, then it's all, it's all good, right? It's all relative. I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah. People who are, 
maybe getting out of the market. Now I would be very cautious about completely pulling your money out right now would, would be, I think, very high risk. Mm. And I think speaking of haircuts, um, which we all do, except, <laughs> yeah. except, except Matt, um, the, uh, <laughs> I can see your nice trim, trim and robber and no beard. Um, I, I feel like there was enough demand leading into this, certainly for condos and houses we're picking up too, um, in, in New Westminster, because that's the bubble that we pay attention to the most. Um, shouldn't say bubble. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> the people, <laughs> People are waiting for this to be over, and as long as they're still working, they will be ready to go start looking at places again. It's potentially in June there's going to be some normalcy to, to things. I, I think there's still the possibility of a delayed spring market, that we get our spring market in the summer. Um, we'll see. I mean, uh, Dr. Bonnie was talking about sort of easing the restrictions but not fully coming out of it. You know, as, as as long as there are people employed, the I think um, we had so much demand before all this slowed down on crazy. Condos. And, was, and inventory never really, never really recovered. There were always yeah. newer places. Like I'm looking at condos right now, and you know, historically, April last year, 365 listings, and we're at 238. So yeah. we're still so yeah, such on on like the lower end of that scale that there aren't as many good options. And it doesn't take long for that to translate into crap. That place I liked just sold. Is there going to be another place? And all of a sudden, buyer, uh, you know, the psychology they want to start start looking a little bit harder or trying a little bit harder. Maybe start writing better offers if they were writing low low balls in the in the early stages of this. Yeah, and let let's talk about that sort of when things are happening because before the show we were all discussing both individually, like in each of our businesses, and overall it feels like this week there's a lot coming on the market, right? Like there are a lot of new listings. You guys, how many listings did you, are you launching this week? One. And Ten. then, and then you had, and then you had two last week. Is that correct? We, we have two more in the bank. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. I was yeah, talking and, to, I was talking to reception uh, downstairs here and they, um, I was like, you still bored out of your mind? And she's like, no, like yesterday it was actually pretty busy. We had uh a handful of new listings come on. So people are starting to, to get back. And that part of that too is like when this was all happening, we were sort of told like, don't work, stay home, don't do anything. And then that sort of shift to be like, Hey, you know, we, people still need to buy things. And, and so as long as you're, you're staying safe and taking all the precautions, um, you need to get out there. So I think some of that is like, Oh, the sky isn't falling. It's okay to start, start getting, yeah. to start working again. Yeah. And I mean, people, people have to move, right? Like we, we launched, uh, two houses uh, last week and we're launching two more houses this week. And, um, and I'm talking to a, a fair amount of people who are sort of on the fence of, Hey, I was thinking about selling. I was planning to get into contact with you now. What do you think? Should I, shouldn't I? And we're weighing our options. But I just, I just noticed this week that there felt like a real change in, um, in the mentality of the sellers out there. Hmm. Well, yeah, there's a lot of them who have been maybe wanting to make a move for a month. And when you have all that built up, like unrelated to COVID-19, yeah. right? Yeah. Now is the time when people start to feel comfortable going ahead and, and pushing forward because the government is out there saying, we're going to start reopening. Um, I'm really curious to hear what the provincial government says today. We're recording this right now before yeah. the government makes their announcement. And right when we finish, we're going to find out what the news is. Um, but whatever this plan is to start reopening. So we, with the general population knowing that, they're starting to get excited to roll out, you know, whatever it is they need to sell and get their move underway. Yeah, it'll, it'll be really interesting. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. I mean, even if things don't slow down, I almost see like we'll still see an increase in listings because I think either way, either they announce that they're, they're lifting restrictions and people are like, okay, time to move on with my plans. But I think there's also this mentality of, okay, well, if this goes on for a year, I still like, I can't wait a year. I'm not I, like, waiting I, a year. Yeah. I, I just noticed like just in, my neighborhood, more people are outside this week. Lots of people are, uh, 
social distancing, but socializing. Like I see people, I'm right now, you guys can't see, but outside of me, I'm looking at a park and I see people, you know, they're standing out there, they're having a chat, they're, they're well distanced away, they're doing it safely. But I didn't see that last week. There weren't people just hanging out in the park talking. Like I think people are, are now adapting. Mm. Yeah, and, I think and, we, we can't help but have an influx of inventory in the yeah. in the next few weeks. Um, I mean, this is like typically this is the time people were planning. When we had conversations in January with people, they're like, "Keep me posted," but this is the year they're getting their place ready. They're painting fences. They're they're doing these little touch ups and things like that. This is kind of already the plan. So you have that mixed in with, I didn't list my house in in April or March, and I was going to. So we we we're, yeah, it's gonna it's inevitable. I, I was talking to a, a friend of mine out in Ontario who, you know, Ontario got hit way harder than we did. They, they, they really got beat up and prices were falling drastically. And you know, I was just having a chat with him and I was like, well, what about this week? Like, is it, is it the same? And he's like, no, totally turned around. Like prices fell enough that the market was like, okay. And all of a sudden he's like, I'm busy. It feels like spring. Um, so yeah. I, I mean, I think that's really helpful too, is, you know, if, if the rest of Canada manages to do well, uh, that just lifts us all up, which, um, you know, Toronto, I think was the most inflated market in Canada. They, they were rising at such a high rate um, that I think uh, seeing them already in some sort of form of recovery, I think is going to give a lot of confidence to, yeah. that, to people. That's a, that's a good thing to touch on too, because the, People that you like one of the stories was, and again, people get the numbers mixed up because they see like sales are going to be down. It's going to be like 1980s. It's just all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and they're not necessarily, they see, they hear that like markets going down 50% and they think like prices, that's kind of where their brain goes a lot of times. Totally. We need to clarify that. Um, and what are we talking? Are we talking about greater Vancouver? Are we talking Canada? Um, obviously that's important to note, but um, for like, that it always happens that way that, that yes, when things are going down, but what, like in our market here, you're looking at 5% drop, like maybe, maybe 10 and like horrible, horrible worst case scenario, maybe like 15. But as soon as you get that first, you know, few percents off 5% off, there's, that's, there's a magic number there and be like, okay, that's enough. I'm fine with that. And then they start yeah. buying and then it's, it, the, you like, it's not a gentle curve. Like if you look at what happened in the, in the past six months, it's, it's a very jagged sort of like, okay, things have changed and, and, and the trajectory completely shifts. Totally. Yeah. And I think people are always, especially with greater Vancouver, they're always so optimistic, the people waiting to get into the market on how much the market's going to drop. And even at the absolute worst, it, it never has. Like it, it's never been, like I had somebody post on one of my listing ads I was running last week. Uh, yeah, call me when the market drops 50% in the next six months. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, market drops 50%, the entire country implodes. <laughs> like that's, uh, uh, you know, you better hope that doesn't happen because nobody can renew their mortgages if uh, if they've got you know, 50% of their value in their homes. But 10% 10, 10 um, is a big difference and that sparks growth. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think for anybody who always is out there thinking when things are going to drop a lot, 10% is about all it takes to really push things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm super curious what you guys think, Like we've had to completely change the way we do business right now. And going forward as restrictions lift, do you think that there are things that will become the new normal that we've implemented? Like, do you think open houses are coming back like they did before? Uh, it depends if this, maybe if this thing's just the new norm and there's this killer virus out there, um, <laughs> then yeah, we might see all our, our social interactions could be changed forever. But um, I don't know if that's the case and it, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see, but yeah, it has been interesting not having open houses on, on Saturday. Yeah. I, I think oh. open houses are going to be, a thing of the past for probably a year or two as far as an advisory to avoid them. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be up to us if we want to bring them back. And there might be a segment of people who go like, ah, we're all used to not doing this. So maybe, maybe by then there will be fewer of them because we've created all of these other systems with videos and virtual tours that the open house isn't necessarily so important. 
Um, but I think it's going to be at least a year where it's an advisory not to host open houses. Yeah, I think it's going to be a long time before we do an open. And I'm, I'm just curious if the public sort of gets on board of like, no, I can do the 360 tour. I watched that awesome video. I'll call you if I want to take a look at it. Like, I wonder uh, if they, I, right now we sell, hey, we're, or not right now, but before we used to sell volume, right? We're going to get so many people through your home. And I, I just wonder if that mentality will shift a little. That's, yeah, that's, that's definitely interesting. It's, um, I think right now this, this is going to be a sign of whether or not the public's going to embrace these new things, like the new technology. Yeah. So that'll be, I mean, we've been talking about this forever of how like one day you're not even going to go into it. You're going to put on your VR glasses and that's how you're doing, you know, that's the future of, of real estate and, and all this stuff. Um, and I just, it just really depends on whether or not the public is going to embrace that. Um, I think maybe more pre-qualifying before showing the listings. Um, we trust that our, our colleagues, um, you know, the other real estate professionals are having their clients pre-approved before they're coming into our properties. Uh, but now we've taken that another step where um, have you looked at the floor plan? Have you street mm -hmm. viewed? Have you, so pre-qualifying people in that way, I would, I would, that'd be really great if that could stick around or people actually were like, show me that you've watched the video. You've gone through this, these, these things ahead of time. Um, it's obviously not going to replace the showing, but I think just as a way to, to say like, yeah, can, you, can you, have you looked into this a little bit or did your client just send you a, a handful of listings and you're just going to see them? Yeah. I mean, I, I think people still need to physically walk through at some point in the sales process. I'm just maybe overly optimistic, but uh, just wondering, yeah, like right now we're putting up all these gates, like, you have to tell me that you have to confirm that you're healthy. Like Jer said, you have to have said that you watched the video. Maybe you ask them to drive around the neighborhood first and just whether some of that stuff will, will last. I, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but real estate more than it ever has in my career feels like a regular job right now. Like I get up, I start working at 9 a.m. I work till 5 p.m. Most, I, like last week I had one showing after 5 p.m., but the majority of the showings, because people are home, and this will change back when it goes back to normal, I think, but the majority of showings happen in the afternoon. Like, people are like, yeah, I can come look around one or two. Like, I can duck out of working from home for 15 minutes to go look at the home, and um, and I've been asking everybody when they come, like, oh, are you looking at a few today? And I'd say 80% are just looking at one home. You know, they're just going to go take a look at one home and, and go do their thing. It's it's just a very different way of doing business. I, I, I can't say I mind it. I kind of like like, oh, my weekends, I just play with my kids and like make breakfast and hang out with my wife. Like it's kind of nice. <laughs> and normally we're dealing with like a real urgency with real estate. Yeah. Um, so it does feel like almost like a little bit of like island vibe, island time where it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go look at a place. Sure. Why not? Okay, what's going on? <laughs> Nope. My boss, thinks, <laughs> my boss thinks I'm at home working. Yeah. So I'll have to put pants on, but I mean, other than that, it's not like, <laughs> it's not too difficult. Yeah. It, uh, although I'm sure I, I miss being busy. Like I, sometimes I, I'm like, Oh man, like I used to have to do like way more things during a day. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if some of it translated. Um, Maybe we'll what do you think, Matt? It's it's hard to know. I mean, I think just like we won't be able to do open houses for a year, a lot of people are going to be working from home for the next year or two. Like the, yeah. the office dynamic is going to be different just in the, the workforce. So there will be more people available to do these midday showings, which will be great. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on board with that. I've always tried to sort of fit that stuff in to try to keep weekends less full for work so that we could have some family time. But I mean, people are going to get used to it just like the way that agents got used to everything like new agents think everything is a multiple offer. New agents right. think all offers are done remotely when we used to no showings showing. until the open house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they get used to these things because they were a trend for a year. They don't know any better. Right. Um, and, and that might just sort of become a trend. And as you, as we get the consumers to adapt, they just might never go back because it's just the way things are done now. Well, and, and they, they might just stay home. Like, I think there might be a lot of jobs that don't go back to an office system 
after this. Like, I think there's probably a lot of people working from home that like, I, I know, um, I know a, a few people I've talked to who have been like, yeah, you know, I've approached my employer and been like, Hey, we can keep doing it this way. Like I'm just as productive at home as, uh, as in the office. Wow. You have friends that don't Scott's kids. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> But those people will be even more productive because the kids will eventually go back to school, right? Mm. I don't like working at home. I actually like coming into the office and, and hanging out with, uh, yeah, I, I prefer. Oh, I, I, I like prefer working you. from the office way better. Um, yeah, me too, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird that the, uh, we've all just been thrown this curveball and, and, and nothing feels normal. And just even driving around, it just, it's a little eerie. It's just something feels off. It's just kind of strange. Um, yeah, it's at, kind of at funny. least once a day. I ask myself, "Is this real life?" Yeah, yeah, it's 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 weird. Very very strange. You know, you know what I think is definitely not coming back. Like in the next ten years, and and Liz and I were joking about this. Like grandkids are going to be like, "Hey, remember when those old people used to like touch each other and shake hands? What a bunch of idiots!" You think hand- handshakes are dead? I think they might be. Yeah, they might be. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I wanted to ask um, Jeff because I know Matt's answer, but have have you had any showings at your property? Like, because anyone said, like, I don't want the public in my my unit unless we have to have that happen or my house. And so you're there with a phone streaming the show. Like, can you go over here and look or like a surrogate? No, no. Every I I think I I was. Actually, right before we did this podcast, I was uh, listening to a presentation from a realtor in the States on how he's changed his listing presentations uh, to adapt to COVID. And the biggest thing he talked about was going over safety protocols in the listing presentation. Like, here's how I'm going to make sure that you are safe and going through the steps of screening that we were talking about. And, you know, he's got gloves and masks provided at every listing to give to them if they show up without that stuff. He's talking about, you know, here's your checklist of what I expect you to do before every showing, similar to the stuff as an office we've been talking about, like leaving the lights on, wiping down, making sure they don't have to touch anything. Um, but I think it's important by having those protocols, like I've been, I've been doing that sort of stuff with my listings on like, Here's how we're going to make sure only qualified people come through. We're sending them the health questionnaire. We're sending them the 360 tour beforehand, yada, yada, yada. Um, I haven't had anybody balk at that because I think we're providing them with a, here's the safety plan before they ever approach it. But I mean, it, I don't know. It, it certainly could be possible, but it would be very hard, I would think, to not let anybody come through at any point during yeah. the sales process. What, have you guys encountered that? No, but I mean, Matt and I, we were kind of just looking at different ways of, of utilizing big video. I know you, you, you use like the Matterport stuff sometimes um, mm-hmm. and just sort of like doing, we just did on the, on the last one, um, I guess last two, um, but uh, just a walkthrough showing like almost like there's a person there. Um, yeah. So taking a little bit longer. So will we still, you know, you still can still do your, your fancy pan, fancy sort of uh, little quick video as like a teaser. Uh, yeah. but it's, it's more for the person who really wants to take a bit of a deeper dive. So let's, let's, yeah. Now and let's actually kind of go in and, you know, I think a, a slower walkthrough tour for sure. I think Matterport 360, I saw an agent out in Edmonton doing, um, guided Matterport. So he's doing, he's screen recording, but he's talking while he goes through the Matterport. Um, and if our listeners don't know what Matterport is, it's basically like Google, uh, Google Maps, Google Street View, and uh, but for for the home, but he talks through as if he was doing a showing, and he sends that to people before they view, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. Um, yeah, I, I think the 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 fancy like video you were talking about versus walkthrough, like the walkthrough is very. This is for someone who already is interested, whereas the the one minute or two minute little. Uh, hype video is more to get an emotional response like that's the hook but you know a really fun cool video they're gonna have a ton of questions when that's done about like oh I'm not really sure about the layout or how that works and yeah I think having a second step is is really worthwhile um, 
Uh, send me your your a link to your your walkthrough. I think that's a great idea. I think it's on virtual tour link. Okay. Yeah, but we'll, I'll share that stuff with you. Yeah, we're kind of looking at it, which I think will always go forward with our business now is two steps, like you said, Jeff, a short one that's kind yeah. of like a commercial, mm. and totally. then a second one that is an actual tour, a walkthrough. Agents can do that a lot of different ways that they want, but Jerry and I are enjoying the way we're doing it as if we're yeah. hosting someone who's in the property. Come on in, we're yeah. chatting with you, we'll show you around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Cool, well, was, was there anything else you guys wanted to touch on? or? Well, I think that's the here and now for uh, early May 2020. Mm. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you very much for listening. If you want to get a hold of Matt or Jer, you can reach them at thenewwestguys.com. If you want to talk to me, Jeff, I am at realestatenewwest.com. Have a great day. Jer, you have to say something if you want the camera oh. to see you. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs>